you need to take advantage of the fact that two valid anagrams will have the exact same number of characters and the frequency. Hence, you just need to find out the number of different characters to get your answer. Yes, it's that simple. If you want a quick solution and just want to see the code, refer to the link in the description below to my GitHub profile. However, if you want to see how I came up with the solution, stick with me a little longer. Hello friends, welcome back to Study Algorithms, a place where I use animations and visuals to simplify programming concepts for you. Today, we will be solving a problem titled Making Anagrams on Hacker Rank. First, I will explain you the problem statement and show you some sample test cases. Next, we will solve the problem using a brute force method and see what problems you might face. Going forward, I will tell you an efficient solution to the problem followed by a dry run of the code. Without further ado, let's get started. Let me try to simplify the problem statement for you first. You are given two strings that may or may not be of the same length. And you need to determine the minimum number of characters that you can delete such that they both become anagrams. Now, two strings are said to be anagrams if they have the exact same number of characters and their frequencies. For example, the word listen and silent are anagrams of each other. They have the same characters, right? To make this problem a little easy, you are also given with a condition that you can remove characters from any of the strings and you do not need to determine which anagram are you forming. So let us look up our test case number one. You can see that you can find the word R in both the strings. Then you can find A in both the strings and then you can find T in both the strings. Hence, if these two strings were R A T and T A R, then they both would have been anagrams, right? Hence, if you delete S, that means if you delete one character, then they both will become anagrams of each other, right? And hence, in test case number one, your answer would be one. In our second test case, you can see that C exists in both of them. Neither D nor E nor A nor B is common in both the strings. And hence, you will have to delete a total of four characters to make both of these strings as anagrams. A single character is also an anagram by the way, because it contains the same number of characters and the exact same character. And hence, in this case, your answer would be 4. Because you are deleting a total of 4 characters, D, E, A and B. Now, if this problem statement is clear to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution can guarantee you if a solution to a problem exists. So, how would a brute force method to this problem would look like? You need to determine the characters that you want to delete, right? So what you can do is you can start off with the first character R. You can search throughout the second string if you can find an R. You can find it. So just mark it. Then you take up the second character A and try to look it up in your second string. You can find it again. Well and good. Now moving on to the third character T. You can find T also in your second string. Moving ahead, you see the fourth character E. You cannot find it in the second string, right? And hence, this character needs to be deleted. But this will tell you only the characters that you need to delete from the first string. You need to scan your second string as well. You see that S was not found. And hence, you will have to delete S also. So, after both of these iterations, you can add both the values that you got one character from the first string and one character from the second string. Adding both of them, you get the answer 2. And hence, in this case, 2 is your answer. This solution is correct. But do you see the problem with this approach? You had to scan the entire string, right? So now, try to look at our test case number 2. What do you do over here? For each character, let's say S, you will have to look up the entire string 2. Then you will move on to character H and you will have to again look up the entire string. And all the way, you will keep on looking this entire string again and again. This will slow down your program a lot. And hence, this is not an efficient solution to the problem. In fact, the brute force solution works in a time complexity of order of n square. And as you know, this time complexity will not give you a fast solution. 
Now, let us see an efficient solution to this problem. To find an efficient solution to the problem, you need to capture some hints from the problem itself. You know that anagrams have the exact same number of characters, right? And the English alphabet has a total of 26 characters. So, if you can somehow map the frequency of the characters in the first string and compare it with the frequency of the characters in the second string, that should give you a hint, right? Because if a character is present in the first string, it has to be present in the second string, right? And its frequency should also be the same. So, what you can do is you can create a frequency array of size 26. So, this will have indices as Right? And what you can say is each of these indices can map to a character in the English alphabet. So you can say that 0 maps to A, 1 maps to B, 2 maps to C, 3 maps to D, and so on. Since this is a frequency array, you can say that each of this position will store the frequency of each character in the strings. Initially, the value of all the elements in this frequency array is 0. You start off with the first character in the first string. You see the letter L. So that means L has a frequency of 1. So I change the frequency of L to be 1 in my frequency array. Then I see the letter F. So I change frequency of F to be 1. Then I see I, then S, then D, then T, then E. Next I see a E again. That means its frequency is 2. So what I will do is, I will change this frequency to 2 and then I get the letter N. Its frequency is also 1. So right now, this frequency array is storing the frequency of all of the characters in the first string, right? Now, what you can do is, you can start traversing the second string. But this time, for each of the character, instead of increasing the frequency, you will decrease the frequency. Because that will help us to identify that, okay, these are the common characters, right? So, I see the letter S. So, the frequency of S is already 1, right? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to reduce it by 1. And it becomes 0. Next, I see the letter I. Its frequency is already 1. So, I change it to 0. Next, you see the letter C. C did not occur in the first array, right? and hence its frequency is already 0. So what I'm going to do is I will decrement it and once I decrement it becomes minus 1. Correct? Now I see the letter L. L is already 1 so I change it to 0. Next I get the letter B. Since the frequency of B is 0 I will just put a minus 1 in here. Next I see the letter E. The frequency of E is 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrement it by 1. And as I decrement it, its value becomes 1. Next, I see the letter n. Since n's frequency is 1, I change it back to 0. Then I see the letter a. The frequency of a is 0, so I just put a minus 1 in here. Next, I get the letter t. The frequency of t is 1, so I change it to 0. Now, you have iterated over both of the strings, right? Just look at the frequency array. This array is now showing you the extra characters that were present in either string 1 or string 2. So, as a last step, what you can do is, you can add the modulus of all of these values in the array. So, taking the modulus, this becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. And if you add all of them, you get the answer 6. And this will be your answer. That means, you will have to delete a total of 6 characters to make them anagrams. If this solution is now clear to you, let us do a dry run of the code and see how it works. Let us take up two sample strings, str1 and str2, to understand the dry run. On the left side of your code, you have the actual code to implement this solution. So, you pass in the strings s1 and s2 as the input parameters. Next, what you do is, you create a frequency array. That would have a size of 26. In the next step, what you do is, you change both of these strings to lowercase, just to ensure a uniformity, and you want to make sure that you are lying in the range of small a to small z, correct? Next, what you do is, you run a loop, 
that will iterate over each of the characters of the first string and for each of the character you do a frequency plus plus so in this case the frequency of r is 1 a is 1 t is 1 and e is 1 going ahead what you do is you run one more loop but this time you will decrement the frequency for each of the character so now t will get reduced by minus 1 a will get reduced by minus 1 r will get reduced by minus 1 but there is an extra s so the frequency of s would be minus 1 in this just like our solution right as a last step what you do is you take the absolute value of all of these values in the array and add them up so when you add the absolute values of all of them you will get the answer 1 plus 1 and that would be 2 so in this case you would return the total as your answer and that would be 2 now the time complexity of this solution is order of n that is because you are scanning both of the strings just once and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 that is because you are using a constant space just to store the frequency array i hope i was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you go ahead and grab those points on hacker rank now as per my final thoughts i want you to think some more solutions to this problem let me give you a hint it can also be solved using a frequency map what other methods did you try and what problems did you face let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i would love to discuss all of them with you you would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. I am including a link in the description below in case you want to read more. Once again, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya!